Hello everyone, this is Guy Hamlin with Trail Keepers of Oregon. I'm a crew leader with TKO and we are developing a series of training videos covering basic or introductory Crosscut Sawyer information. Our goal is to create YouTube videos for this basic information that supplements a formal classroom situation, particularly when it's not convenient for a public gathering. It's important to mention, however, that this material does not substitute nor qualify for an official Forest, Ser Forest Service Sawyer training course. This information is generalized background material to be part of an informal discussion for folks new to the volunteer crosscut Sawyer world. As you will find out, the Crosscut Saw World is a subject rich in history, a significantly new vocabulary for trail workers, and with a lot of rules and best practices to ensure the safety of a saw team and visitors alike. This photo is from the Central Oregon SWATS folks, that is, Sawyers with Attitude to Spare. There will be a series of videos at a fairly high level covering different aspects of a basic introductory workshop for prospective volunteer crosscut sawyers. Videos like what are the four service regulatory requirements for a volunteer saw program, to a discussion of what is a saw team, and then to more complex subjects like log bind analysis, and cut sequences. Subsequent classroom training sessions will be in greater depth, and then a formal Forest Service sanctioned training course will provide a student with the information and knowledge to, hopefully, when coupled with crosscut saw hands-on experience, enable a student to become a Forest, Cer Forest Service certified apprentice sawyer. Part of the learning curve for folks new to the Crosscut Sawyer world is the extensive vocabulary of terminology, rules, and nuanced definitions. One goal of this video series is to give you the big picture. That is, when coupled with some required reading like Saws That Sing, will give you a basis to ask many questions. So let's begin. So what is an official Forest Service SAW program? The Forest Service provides an umbrella type organization where groups like TKO can opt in. Such groups must adopt the Forest Service rules, which includes training, evaluation, certification, and including record keeping. There is a national standardization at the federal level of all Forest Service sanctioned SAW programs. In other words, uniformity of SAW program requirements across all Forest Service jurisdictions nationwide. Number two, the Forest Service National Program provides specific direction on Sawyer qualifications, training requirements, and the certification and evaluation procedures. And number three, a very detailed program definition, some 31 pages in the Forest Service Manual FSM 2358. And the Forest Service program is evolving. Expect more standardized training materials in 2021, where the Forest Service goal is consistency in Sawyer training nationwide. You must be authorized by the Forest Service if you're going to cut logs on Forest Service controlled properties. If authorized, you will be covered by Forest Service insurance and may also be entitled to workman's compensation benefits. Organizations like Trail Keepers of Oregon is an authorized organization to perform crosscut logouts on Forest Service properties. 
TKO is an approved Option 2 SAW program. Operating under the umbrella of the National Forest Service SAW Policy, FSM 2358. Most Forest Service responsibilities are delegated to the TKO SAW program coordinators as part of this Option 2 program. Most other agencies, like the BLM or Oregon State Parks or DNR, recognize the Forest Service certification. Certification is valid nationwide on U.S. Forest Service lands. In Oregon, this is not an unusual after winter log fall across the trail. This was on the spur trail to Puck Creek Falls off the Clackamas River Trail. This was an 18 inch log with severe end bind plus a surprising amount of torsional bind. The log wanted to roll. These pictures are the before, the midway, and after pictures. Hikers were forced to go down off trail, then crawl over the log. This is a big safety improvement to the trail. Because most of the Forest Service 2358 requirements are delegated to TKO, TKO must do the following. One, provide training, certification, and recertification training by Forest Service authorized instructors. Two, maintain TKO records for the above, including all record keeping, which includes copies of the first aid and CPR certifications and issued Forest Service National Sawyer Certification Cards. Three, ensure that Sawyers use saws within the limits of their certification or qualifications. Four, the primary purpose of a Sawyer certification is for Sawyer safety by confirming that the Sawyer has met applicable training requirements and has successfully completed a Sawyer training and field proficiency evaluation. And five, TKO must monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of its SAW program. So in short, there's a lot of responsibility for TKO for classroom and field proficiency training to produce certified Sawyers with the skills, knowledge, and an awareness of relevant safety concerns. So typically most SAW programs have an introductory or basic Sawyer classroom course for those new to the crosscut saw world. Then an official Forest Service sanctioned training classroom program that can, but not always, lead to a Forest Service crosscut certification at the A or B level. New Sawyers typically become an A or apprentice Sawyer for a year to gain logout experience before attempting an upgrade to a B Sawyer. Saw safety training is required for all Sawyers, including initial Sawyers, upgrading Sawyers, and recertification Sawyers. Central to all Sawyer training is the OLEC process. OLEC is an acronym that stands for Objective, Hazards, Leans or Binds, Escape Paths, and the Cut Plan. Formal Forest Service sanctioned training will go into depth about the elements of the OLEC process, including the variables in the complexity analysis. Complexity analysis is the umbrella technical term for assessing all the risks at a job site. Bind analysis and cutting sequence are topics for all crosscut sawyers wanting to be certified at the A or B level. There are different training requirements for A applicants versus B applicants. The bind analysis and determining a safe cut plan is for most for folks the most satisfying part of participating on a SAW team. 
The common theme for Sawyer certification is safety, safety, safety for both the saw team and those in the vicinity of the job site. Sawyers must demonstrate saw knowledge, field proficiency, and communication control of the saw job site. The key part of all formal training is to enable an applicant to be able to participate in or safely lead a crosscut saw team. The Forest Service has eliminated the log size restrictions that have been traditionally associated with each certification level. The Forest Service is now emphasizing the evaluation of the job site complexity and the rigorous use of the go-no-go no go analysis methods. It is central to this new card designated standard that it be fully understood that a bee sawyer is charged with the responsibility of following saw requirements, saw team leadership, and the overall project safety. Every bee sawyer can supervise an A sawyer. On every crew, a saw lead needs to be designated so there is no question which bee sawyer is in charge. Bee sawyers will often supervise other bee sawyers. We talked earlier about complexity. This is an example of a very complex set of logs that a saw team might occasionally encounter after a harsh winter. We generally call this jumbled mess of logs a jack straw. But with a methodical, well-reasoned cut plan, a saw team can safely remove this jack straw of logs from the trail. This was a training session for a group of TKO Sawyers. As part of the field certification for A and B Sawyers, TKO will use Forest Service Form FS 2352B, the field evaluation for crosscut saws. Certification cards are now issued for a three year time period. This Form 2352B is a great outline of the knowledge and training elements required for both A and B Sawyer applicants. This is the first of a planned seven short informative videos covering, at a fairly high level, the basic components of a crosscut saw program. Our goal is to provide enough information about becoming a crosscut sawyer for you to start your training and participating in a log out trail party. Come join us for some crosscut saw log out fun.